I started my cybersecurity journey more than three years ago and I feel like it's time to make this video and talk about the ups and downs that I've experienced so far in this career path. So if you're wondering what your future may look like if you work in cybersecurity, this video is for you. If you guys are new to my channel, then my name is Jono and I work in cybersecurity as a stock analyst. I feel like the best way to structure this video so it makes sense to everyone is to provide you guys a quick summary of my educational background, how I joined cybersecurity, what I've been doing in my early days in this career, how I've progressed myself to the next level, and what my experience has been right now in a more senior position. So for my educational background, I did computer science majored in data science. Initially, my first job in tech was actually in software engineering, specializing in automation. This was probably the best path for me at the time because I was still fresh with coding and I had computer science knowledge that can be used in this role like data structures and SQL programming. I joined this graduate program in the company which goes for about two years and that allowed me to hone my skills in this role for the first year. Then for the second year, I was stuck between deciding to pursue a path in data engineering or cybersecurity. And of course, you guys know which path I chose but it was really difficult for me at the time because I had no idea what cybersecurity was all about I couldn't really find any real content on like what they actually do fun fact that's actually what inspired me to start this channel so anyone that's in the same position as I was can have a better understanding of what's actually going on in this field and the main reason why I chose cybersecurity is down to one thing job security I know in terms of salary data engineering and cybersecurity is more or less the same but cybersecurity has more diverse roles in this industry, which means more job opportunities. Now that was a quick summary of how I got into cybersecurity. Let's talk about my first year in this job. I would say the first two to three months on the job was pretty painful for me. The type of work I was doing were mainly documentations and audits. I was going through our AWS environment and using services like Trusted Advisor to export all of our vulnerabilities we have. The most mentally exhausting part about a lot of this work is I need to constantly chase up on people to resolve these vulnerabilities because only the application owners would know what they are and for a lot of these findings, we don't even have documentations who the app owners were. So it was a lot of back and forth and and a lot of chatting and dead ends. And for me, coming from a background of developing stuff like coding and automations, this was so boring for me. I think like the next month I was expressing to my manager like how much I didn't like this type of work and I needed some more dev work. Luckily, I have a good manager and he actually listened to my needs and introduced me to Splunk. If you guys don't know what Splunk is, it's a SIEM solution that essentially lets you pull in logs from all different sources like your firewall, your internet traffic, or your user activities. And with Splunk, I could play around with a lot of things like creating dashboards, creating alerts and reports. This type of work also involved a lot of problem solving because I had to think of the most optimal way to write up the SPL, which stands for Search Processing Language. And also I had to think from a user's perspective, like if they were using this dashboard that I created, does it make sense? Is it easy to use? Does it provide the information thereafter? I guess this type of work was quite stimulating for me. So because of Splunk, I decided to continue this role. And during this time, one of my other major responsibility was also attending a lot of help desk tickets like users reporting emails that they think are phishing. This particular task was a daily job for me and I think it really helped me understand the patterns to easily spot for the red flags like suspicious email address, asking you to click on the link, asking you to download a file. I think this work also helped me solidify my foundational knowledge on what a typical phishing attack looks like so I can build better alerts and monitoring for it. Towards the later half of the year, I started being more involved in automation work like using Splunk Sword to create playbooks that can take certain actions based on certain results. Part of the goal of creating an automation is to reduce the amount of manual work. Because the less time you spend doing repetitive manual work, the more time we have to improve and enhance our existing security. Now since I took a little time handling those email phishing reports, I experienced where the pain points were and I was able to automate them Way. Like for example, when we do certain investigations, we'll have to make sure to keep an audit trail of whatever we did just in case someone questions us. So that means we have to log everything onto a ticket. This is usually a time consuming step, but having an automation that lets you do all of this in one click really helps speed up the efficiency of your work. So besides automation, I was also dabbling in a lot of development on the cloud side of things like AWS. This type of work was mainly on developing a pipeline so we can pull log events from different sources using API. Now that's generally more or less what my role was about in the first year. For the second year, I started being more involved in higher level meetings. So stuff like talking with different stakeholders on their application requirement from 
a security standpoint and also working with new solutions that were onboarding into our environment. One of the more notable things that I did in my second year was integrating a new email security solution. Essentially, I had to learn this process from start to finish. So that means shop around for companies that provide the solution we're after, cost and benefit analysis, to propose a recommended solution for the higher ups for funding, then work with the product manager to do all the proof of concept, do the pilot test and the production rollout, all that jazz. It was really full on for me because I've never done something like this before, so it was pretty intense. But at the same time, the amount of knowledge and experience that I got from that was invaluable. My second year was mostly focused on onboarding new security solutions. So I had to research for other solutions for other systems like MISP, which allows us to have a centralized location for threat intel feed, and also a solution for DLP, which is data loss prevention. And even though they were still quite intense for me, it was less stressful because it was just a matter of going through the same process. I almost forgot to bring this up. While all of these new things were happening, I had to continue doing the business as usual stuff like attending to help desk tickets, creating and maintaining alerts and dashboards and so on. So with all this stuff that was going on, my days were flying by. My 8 hour days felt like 4 hour days and many times I felt like I didn't achieve enough and I just wanted to work a little bit longer and before I know it, it was my third year in this role. Now at this point, my time with the daily BAU tasks like responding to tickets and alerts has been reduced by a lot. So most of them are handled by other people within my team and the majority of my time nowadays is focused on threat hunting, which basically means that I'm brainstorming different methods and solutions for more advanced attack factors. So this involves using something called a minor attack framework, which provides you different types of alerts that you should be configuring to monitor certain techniques that a threat actor can use. We've also recently integrated a new privilege management solution that allows us to control and maintain a lot of our admin access across all our systems. And since I was also leading this integration, I became the subject matter expert for this solution. And that means whatever issue or questions that anybody has, it will mostly be directed to me. At this stage in your career, you should understand most, if not all, of how your environment works. So security tools like email security, web security, firewall, endpoints, and so on. All of this, you should know how it works from front to back. The reason for that is when someone reports a security incident, I need to be able to immediately know where to look and what to look for. And with those information and logs handy, I need to be able to make an informed decision on what actions to take and do up reports if the higher ups need it. The amount of automation work I've been doing has also increased by a lot in response to all these new integrations that are happening in this space. As you can imagine, with all these new alerts for threat hunting, there will be an influx of tickets to resolve. So a lot of where the automation comes in is where we need to do specific checks like IP address and account activity. I would say that having some form of a development skill like learning how to read code and understanding how systems work has been one of the key factors that allowed me to progress myself to the next level in this role. And being exposed to different types of meetings with different types of people, leading solution integrations, training new team members and delegating tasks, I think all these skills and experiences are really valuable in a senior level position. Anyway, that's generally what my experience has been so far in cybersecurity. I'm feeling comfortable with the type of work I'm doing, but not so much on the volume of work I'm given. Maybe I'll start picking up some red team skills to learn. Anyway, hope you guys found this insightful. Thanks for watching.